At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the break room products to satisfy everyone's preferences, while AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things, but I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make stocking your team's break room easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. This is a Stocks for Beginners quick tip. Essential lessons, questions answered. We've discussed ETFs many times on this podcast, but have you heard of thematic ETFs? In this quick tip, Morningstar product manager Mark LaMonica offers his opinion on thematic ETFs. So, you know, a thematic ETF generally will cover a very narrow part of the market. And, you know, what it's supposed to do is really take advantage of a narrative that's resonating with investors. And that, of course, is where the marketing comes in, right? If you have this narrative, it makes it a lot easier to go out there and sell. And that's nothing new, right? Sort of this notion of a compelling narrative has been around since, you know, the South Sea bubble. Investors like stories. We all like stories with everything. And so if you have a story about something, it makes it yeah, much easier to market. So ETF companies really like thematic ETFs. One of the examples at the moment, of course, are ESG funds. They're becoming so popular because it's seen to be something that young people are very interested in to be seen to be doing something valuable with their investing as well. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. So any sort of theme. So there obviously is a wide variety of themes. Ethical investing is certainly a theme. Now, one of the interesting things about anything sort of ESG related is it comes in so many different flavors. So everything from, you know, funds that are really doing negative screening, that's what you hear about the most. So let's say you don't invest in coal or you don't invest in companies that are damaging the environment. But also ESG can take really a more holistic view of factors and really look at, okay, are these factors as investors, we take on risk? Are the risks from things like like climate change, are those being incorporated into the price? So the one thing to be careful about with sort of ESG and ethical investing is it comes in lots of different flavors. So I want to hear your story about the railroads, the telegraph and fiber optic cables. What have they got to do with thematic ETFs? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, once again, obviously, there were not ETFs in what I'm about to talk about. There are not ETFs around at the time. But it is important to note as that there are certainly these compelling narratives that have always attracted investors. And if ETFs had been around at that time, they would have been marketed as such. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I think if we look at railroads, telegraphs, and fiber optic cables, the interesting lesson that this has for thematic ETF investors is all of them transform the world. They had really profound impacts on the ways that we all, or people back when this happened, lived their lives. So let's take a look into some of those. So the telegraph, of course, really the first way that information was able to go quickly a long distance. And yeah, there was a huge bubble in the US around telegraphs. So between 1846 and 1852, the number of telegraph miles in the US went up 10 times. And basically, you know, these were startups. Um, so a little different than what we think of as a startup these days, but these were companies that were started to lay all these telegraph networks and they faced all the same problems that startups face now. So, you know, certainly there were issues with the quality as floods and weather and everything else knocked out these telegraphs. The other problem was there was a ton of competition. So this theme was something that was sort of universally accepted. So you had lots of companies competing over this. And basically what happened is there was a ton of capacity. And ton of capacity led to bad business outcomes. So most of these startup telegraph companies went out of business. And the ones that stayed around couldn't charge a lot because it turns out that one telegraph is just as good as the other one. So companies that were using telegraphs and people that were using telegraphs could shop around. So not a great situation for investors. Very, very similar with railroads. Same thing. Just before we get onto the railroads, I just wanted to say there is a book that came out well, most probably a decade or so ago called The Victorian Internet, which was the story of the telegraph industry. And there's parallels, isn't there, between the telegraph industry and um, the early days of the internet? I mean, is AOL still around? <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And competition. And at the end of the day, the railroads didn't do very well. So in the U.S. in 1894, there was a railroad crash where a quarter of railroad companies went out of business. But like the Telegraph, the beneficiaries of this profound change in transportation, the beneficiaries were actually other companies. And so this is around the time that Sears Roebuck started, Montgomery Ward. So all of a sudden, these companies were shipping, you know, mail order products across Across the country. And at the same time that Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, companies that we still hear about today, they became national companies because they could take advantage of, once again, these very, very cheap railroad rates to ship things all around the country. So it's just an example, and we'll do the last example, something that actually occurred in more people's lifetime, like my own. The last example, if we look at fiber optic cables. So late 90s, right, the internet's starting up. What do we need? What infrastructure do we need? We need to lay cable so that we can, of course, have all these high-speed networks that we all you know, take for granted now. So companies like Global Crossing, WorldCom, they invested $30 billion. They built out 90 million miles of fiber optic cable. And in 2001, along with the dot-com bubble bursting, this burst as well. And at the time, amazingly enough, 5% of everything, all these cables that they put all around the world were being used. So huge oversupply. And so these companies went out of business, but we're all seeing the benefit now, right? Google, YouTube, Facebook, all these business models that are reliant on the ability to deliver data around the world are based off of this. And, you know, I think the point and why this ties in with thematic ETFs is they're all examples examples where the theme was correct. So the internet was going to change the world. Railroads were going to change transportation and shipping. But the question is, who is the beneficiary? And we always get in these situations where we don't know. Is the beneficiary the company that is, in this case, laying the fiber optic cable or the railroads? Or is the beneficiary consumers or other companies that use these networks to build out a business? So that's just something that's important to be mindful of with thematic ETFs is we don't really know who the beneficiary is going to be. If you found this podcast helpful, please tell a friend, especially if it's someone who needs to start thinking about investing for their future. You'll be helping them and helping me to keep this show on the road. Stocks for Beginners is for information and educational purposes only. It isn't financial advice and you shouldn't buy or sell any investments based on what you've heard here. Any opinion or commentary is the view of the speaker only, not Stocks for Beginners. This podcast doesn't replace professional advice regarding your personal financial needs, circumstances or current situation. And thank you for listening to my podcast. At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the breakroom products to satisfy everyone's preferences, while AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things, but I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations, plus our team's experience, to make stocking your team's breakroom easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human.